Did you know that the evil queen from Snow White wasn't always a wicked stepmother who valued her own image over the life of her stepdaughter? If there's one thing that Snow White and the Seven Dwarves made clear, it's that the queen only truly cared about being the fairest of them all. But believe it or not, the queen wasn't born evil. In fact, there are some versions of the story that describe her as a kind and loving character. It wasn't until fate dealt the queen a horrid hand that she became the villain who started the evil stepmother's trend. Stick around as I tell you about every heartbreaking detail of the Queen's past that turned her into Disney's first true villain. One of the biggest takeaways that I have learned from the Queen's past is the fact that she didn't always resent her stepdaughter. Instead, she truly cared for Snow White, at least for a while. You see, a lot of the Queen's backstory actually comes from the book Fairest of All, The Tale of the Wicked Queen by Serena Valentino. And judging by the way the book opens up, you can just tell that the Queen was once happy with her new family. Serena's story opens on the Queen's wedding day, the day that she married the King, and the day that Snow White became her stepdaughter. Since it's written from the Queen's perspective, readers actually get to witness the happiness that she felt when she was first with her new husband and his daughter. It was even written that the Queen had a close friend with the title of being a lady-in-waiting. Her name was Verona, and she ended up playing a bigger role in the Queen's story than I had expected, but I'll get to that soon. The book goes on to explain how the Queen first met her new husband, going back to her father's shop when she was young. You see, the queen was the daughter of a mirror maker, and on one fateful day, the king came into his shop looking for a mirror. The king ran into his future queen while she was standing outside of the shop near a well, one that readers might recognize as the same well that was in Snow White. The king remarked how beautiful she was, and, as the story goes, the pair were happily married. On their wedding day, the king gave his new bride two impressive gifts. The first was the well that they first met in front of. According to the book, the king had the well moved onto his property, and if you know how wells work, that's super impressive. It's hard to imagine how he moved all of that stone and rebuilt the well perfectly on his property. But hey, in the many kingdoms, anything can happen. The other gift that the king gave to his new queen was a beautifully crafted mirror. Needless to say, the queen was happy with her decision to marry into this new family. But was her relationship with Snow White really that good before the original Disney film? Well, if you consider that the queen actively tried to protect Snow White from three sinister witches, it's pretty clear that she loved her stepdaughter. In Fairest of All, the king was often away from the castle because the kingdom was at war. And once, while he was away, the queen received three strange visitors. They were sisters who claimed to be distant cousins of the king himself. The queen welcomed them into the castle, and when the king returned, he was happy to see them. However, Snow White clearly felt comfortable with the queen as she explained that the three visitors had been making her life horrible. Snow claimed that they were terrorizing her and the queen wasn't having any of it. According to the book, even though the king sided with his supposedly distant cousins, the queen sided with her stepdaughter and angrily had the visitors who were terrorizing Snow White thrown out of the castle. Interestingly enough, the queen later explained in the book why she was so protective of Snow White, and it had to do with an awful relationship that she had when she was younger. According to the queen, her father might have been famous, but that didn't make him a saint. She told the king how her father was abusive toward her and would call her ugly any chance he could. Little did she know that she would see her father again and much sooner than she ever could have fathomed. But what does any of this have to do with the queen becoming evil? Well, it's because, according to Serena Valentino, the queen's wickedness can be traced back to her father. In the book, after explaining everything about her horrible childhood to the king, the queen went to bed. However, she was woken up in the middle of the night by a face in the mirror she received as a wedding gift. The mirror spoke and claimed to not only be a slave to the queen, but also that he was the soul of her father. The queen obviously freaked out and screamed, which caused the king to rush into the room. In order to comfort his wife, he smashed the mirror. Finally, the queen had someone in her life to bring her comfort and support her. But sadly, it wouldn't last long. The king was quickly called back to the battlefield, and soon after, the queen was given a strange package. She was shocked when she opened it and saw the mirror the king had smashed, only this time, it was all fixed up and ready to speak with her again. The man in the mirror wasted no time explaining that the queen's husband had died in battle, news that was soon confirmed by the queen's friend, Verona. At this point in the book, the queen hosts a funeral for her late husband, 
And to make matters even worse, with the funeral came three unwelcome guests. It was the king's three distant cousins who soon revealed to the queen that they were witches who had fixed the mirror for her. And through the three witches and the mirror itself, the queen learned the dark truth about her birth. According to the story, the queen's mother was unable to have children, which prompted her father to make a deal with the witches. In exchange for a child, he sold his soul, which, when he passed away, was bound to the mirror that the queen was given on her wedding. The sisters explained to the queen that the mirror would tell her anything that she wanted to know, although she might be ruined by the things that he says. Can you tell where this is going? After she learned the truth about the mirror, the queen decided to learn what her father's real opinion of her was and asked him once and for all who was the fairest of them all, to which he replied, you are my queen. Just like in the movie, the book shows the queen becoming more and more obsessed with hearing about her beauty, to the point where she even forced her best friend out of the kingdom. You see, one day, when the mirror replied to the queen that Verona was more beautiful, out of jealousy, the queen had Verona removed from the kingdom. At one point, the queen even considered having her killed, which is wild. And it only gets worse. As the days went by, the queen continued to ask the mirror who the fairest was. And for a while, the mirror would reply that she was. However, if you know the original story of Snow White, you'll know that the mirror eventually had a different answer for the queen. And on that fateful day, he claimed that her stepdaughter, Snow White, was the fairest maiden in the land. Now, at this point in the book, the three sisters return to the kingdom and try to convince the queen to kill Snow White. That being said, even though the queen was clearly tempted, she managed to resist the urge at first. This is where Valentino explained that the sisters offered the queen another solution. They offered her an elixir of sorts that they said would help ease her decision. The queen, at this point, was too far gone and didn't hesitate to drink the concoction. The elixir got right to work and began swaying the queen toward her evil thoughts and wicked tendencies. However, she still couldn't stand the thought of having Snow White's blood on her hands. So instead, she decided to put the evil deed in someone else's hands as she hired the huntsman to kill her stepdaughter. The book explains that the huntsman agreed at first, but he ended up failing the queen and even brought her a pig's heart to try to trick her into thinking he had killed Snow. That wouldn't be the end of the queen's plot though. This is when the novel mixes in with the movie as the queen makes her way to her castle's laboratory. It's there that the queen transforms herself into the old woman that Snow White meets in the garden and convinces her to take a bite out of the poisoned apple. The queen is shown to be hesitant while executing her plan, but as you know from the movie, she inevitably gets Snow White to eat the apple that puts her in the comatose state known as the sleeping death. But would you believe me if I told you that wasn't the last gift that the queen gave to Snow? As you know from the film, Snow White was saved by the prince who woke her from her eternal slumber, but not before the queen's inevitable demise. After nearly killing Snow White, the queen was forced to flee. Instead of seeking shelter in the forest, she decided to take the path up the cliff, which was essentially the path to her death. Once Snow White woke up, she didn't have any living relatives left. Despite all that had happened to her, the book explains that Snow White couldn't bring herself to hate the queen, considering all they went through before she was almost killed. Snow White eventually married the prince, and much like her stepmother, she received an interesting wedding gift, a mirror that contained the soul of the queen. And although that might sound horrifying, according to the book, the queen used it as a chance to tell Snow White that she loved her. It's a really nice way to wrap up an otherwise dark story. But what do you think about the origin of the evil queen? Would things have turned out differently for her if she had never had a run-in with the three witches? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below.